My name is Hope Osborne and welcome to TRTA TV. Today I have with me TRTA's newest employee, Brock Gregg. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Hope? I'm good. Great. So, Brock, we introduced you in our summer edition mm -hmm. of The Voice, sure. but could you tell everyone who might have missed that issue what you do for TRTA? Sure. Well, primarily I'm here to help. Um, uh, I'm hoping to be able to work with our members and our committees, uh, our leadership, and um, uh, really move us forward a little bit, not backwards, but in a different direction, towards, back towards the active educator uh, employee organizations and, uh, and active educators, and try to help us recruit more folks into TRTA. So what do you foresee being the primary issues facing active educators in this upcoming legislative session? Well, I think this session holds an enormous number of issues for the education community. If I were to break those down into some primary issues, of, let's say three, uh, the first one obviously would be the funding crisis. Uh, the legislature has not uh, adequately funded our schools in a long time, maybe, maybe never. Uh, and at this point, we're in, we're in a crisis period. And the Supreme Court decided not to tell the legislature how to adequately fund our schools, so they're going to have to climb up a large hill here if they want to really do something to help the students out there. I think that uh, the second issue would be really parental dissatisfaction. And that's primarily with the testing system and the accountability system. Um, just recently, as a matter of fact, the State Board of Education did a survey on the testing and accountability system. 27,000 people from across the state answered this online survey. That's a large number, uh, it's a large pool obviously. About 100% of them had negative comments, and that's not a joke. That's, on, uh, that's online if you want to go look at it. Uh, the testing and accountability system in this state is out of control. It's really been an attempt to try to replace teachers with a test. It's been about a 20 or 25 year attempt, and uh, it's failed. It's time to do something different. Parents are, are sick of it. I think that educators have been saying this for a long time. They are not worried about being held accountable but uh, they would like to be able to do their jobs. The third issue, I think, would be privatization of schools. There's been this uh, idea that we're gonna turn schools into corporate profit centers. Uh, that is not appropriate. Public education is for the public. It's for our students. It is uh, uh, a foundation of our democracy. And this idea that people should be uh, getting rich off of public schools is just wrong-headed. Uh, it's been around a long time. It has a lot of big money behind it. And uh, I hope that uh, this same parental dissatisfaction with testing begins to look at that issue and let's put that to rest and move on and do the right things for our students in our public schools. So I think those are some issues that certainly uh, we, we all need to be looking uh, towards and working on. I think those are all very true points. I would even add a fourth, as you know, we have a issue with getting proper funding for our TRS care, for our retirees. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the fourth issue is healthcare funding. So what are the similarities and differences between the funding and existence of TRS care and TRS active care? Well, the education community is in dire need of funding for insurance in, in general, uh, for both sides. We have two separate programs, but really they have the same issues. Um, the employee in, one, in the active member case, or the retiree in our case, are paying the bulk of the costs here. And those costs continue to go up. Uh, and in our case, our uh, funding mechanism is not tied to the cost of health care. So we've not pre-funded that system. And the legislature has stepped up to the plate last session and, and had a supplemental appropriation that kept the program going. Uh, and they're going to have to continue to do that or somebody's going to have to continue to fund this system. Um, and what I think we need to do is uh, really work hard together to get people to understand that we've got to have a health care system for our retirees. And people who are, are barely getting by on a fixed income are not going to be able to pay three times what they're paying in premiums now. On the active member side, you have uh, obviously those folks are not on a fixed income per se, <laughs> although they certainly haven't had a very a good salary increases in a long time. But they're also paying the bulk of their health care costs. And so school districts are in, a, are in a bind here because they're trying to compete for employees where in the private marketplace the employee pays about 30 percent of the cost. In the public schools of Texas it's almost flipped. 
the employees paying 70% of the cost. The legislature has not provided a, a single dollar to the active care program since it was, uh, since its inception. Something has to be done. Somebody has to pay for, for insurance, and, and it needs to be some kind of shared expense where, that everyone can afford that will also take care of, of folks the way they need to be taken care of. But going into this next legislative session coming up in 2017, mm -hmm. what are some ways that you think that actives and retirees can work together? That's, uh, I appreciate you asking that question, and I think that we have to look past just this session, uh, and we also have to look past the legislature. I mean, obviously, we have to work together for things coming up in the legislative session. I think that uh, that requires communication first. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would suggest, for example, that we try to get across this message to all educators that we are all in this together. Uh, retired educators, uh, one of the greatest things about that I've learned so far working here is that most of their questions really are about what's going on now in the classroom. How can I help the teachers in the classroom now? And I'll tell you how that can help. Don't wait till the legislature starts to start working with uh, other organizations or people in your local schools. Um, for example, if you have active educator organizations in your community, go to their meetings. Invite them to your meetings. Let's form relationships back home and start that lobbying back home. Go and see your legislators together. Send a unified message that education needs uh, help, that educators should be respected, and that all of us working together are going to get the pension system and the health care systems that we deserve, we can't let them split us apart. Uh, and really, I think that that begins at home. Not, let's not wait till we get up here. Let's start on it now. Brock, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. I, I'm really looking forward to uh, working here for TRTA. It's an honor to be able to work for retired educators and uh, uh, just, just can't wait for the next few years. And thank you to all of you for watching TRTA TV. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and have a wonderful rest of your day.